Welcome everybody to this fifth PCB Investigator Physics simulation tutorial where I want to show you how to improve the thermal behavior of our board by adding a cooling aluminum plate at the bottom side. So I will open again our already known um, board here. The layout change and the additional drills of tutorial number three are still exist here. With this layout change we were able to decrease the temperature from around about 152 degrees to approximately 115 degrees on the top side. But now we will try to decrease a little bit more by adding an aluminum plate. So therefore I go into the matrix, the stack up definition let's say, and I add first a new prepreg layer. The type is not so important, I just add prepreg. The material is defined afterwards. So this one is a gap pad. And I will add another prepreg layer which is an aluminum plate at the end, but I define it as a as an uh, dielectricum layer. And this is the aluminum plate. And give those layers a height of 500 micrometer for the gap pad and let's say 2000 micrometers, so 2 millimeters for the aluminum plate. Okay, so file and save. When I now go into the physics tab and start the simulation again, we change the project name to tutorial number 5 and have to define the materials for our two new layers here. Therefore we have to go to the material library as we have only a few uh, materials in our local design library uh, we have to add them from the global material library. So I will add a gap pad 1500 and I will add aluminium. Now I'm able to select the gap pad here and to select the aluminium plate here. So what we now have is a top and a bottom layer with a prepreg in between, then a gap pad on the bottom side and a 2 mm aluminum plate connected to this gap pad. The current still remain the same as also the power does. I just have to remove the heatsink which we have simulated in tutorial number 4. Because in this tutorial number 5 I want no heatsink, instead I want to have this aluminum plate. Ok, environmental parameters keep unchanged. So now I start the simulation. Ok, let's find out how the aluminium plate influences our temperature. So I activate the temperature overlay and now we see a quite different picture as we have seen in the other tutorials. We have a maximum temperature of 97 degrees but the temperature is quite similar on the whole board. So we see that the temperature on the top layer is somewhere between 63 and 96 degrees. So there is nearly no cold area anymore and the heat is spread all around the whole PCB in a quite symmetrical way. If you go to the bottom layer we see a very similar picture, maybe even more symmetrical. So we have values between 72 and 87 degrees. And if we go down to the aluminium plate it has nearly the same temperature over the whole area. 
So we see that the aluminum plate helps spreading the heat evenly over the whole board. I will now add again our notes from the first tutorial and again update the text as well as setting the color range to the 142.6 degrees we had uh, in the first tutorial. And we see that the temperature now is 94 degrees on the top layer. It was 142 in tutorial 1, 115 in tutorial 3 where we did the layout change and 78 in tutorial number 4 we added the heatsink. So we are somewhere in the middle between um, the copper change and the heatsink um, compared to the tutorial number 3 we have a loss of about 20 degrees but we are still around about 16 degrees hotter than we were with the heatsink in tutorial number 4. When switching to bottom side we see 81 degrees um, there we had 106 degrees in tutorial number 3 and 73 degrees in tutorial number 4 with the heatsink. But what we also see is that the temperature is spread all around the board very very evenly. And also on the top layer we have 72 degrees here, 94 degrees here, so there's a very even um, temperature spreading. I will now again export um, these layers into PDF file. So we call it tutorial number 5. And again one page per layer. I will now open the different PDFs for comparison. So we now see all the six simulation results next to each other. The first one, tutorial 1, without any design optimization, was on top layer around about 190, 139 degrees. When we changed the base material in tutorial 2, we got down to 132 degrees. The reason was that the temperature was spreading better through the FR4 material as in the first example. This is example tutorial number 3b where we just did a change in the copper layer on the bottom side and there we got down to 122 degrees and on the right top side tutorial number 3b where we added also additional drills to connect the copper on the top and the bottom side and there we got down to 115 degrees. The fourth example was the heat sink which we added on our U1 component and the copper change and the additional drills were still included and there we got down to 78 degrees. Instead of using a heat sink we added an aluminium plate in tutorial number 5 and here we got down to 94 degrees and a much more evenly spread temperature over the whole board. So as you can see PCB Investigator Physics can be used in many different ways to do design optimization and find the best way to reduce the temperature on your board. For any questions please contact us at info at easylogics.de or by using our contact form on our website www.pcb-investigator.com Thank you very much for watching these tutorials.